Yo, what's good? My name is Reginald, aka the R Star, aka Mr. Straight Fire, and this is Unabashedly Reggie's breakdown analysis. The Eminem's verse on Not a Like. Oh, you run the streets, huh? Now you wanna come and fuck with me, huh? This little cocksucker, he must be feeling himself. He wants to keep up. It's next time you don't gotta use Tech Nine if you wanna come at me with a submachine gun. And I'm talking to you, but you already know who the fuck you are, Kelly. So drain my soul and then told him the moment he saw me that I'd be the most hated, though made it so that there's no shame. Before we start, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. As always, check the description to find time codes to skip to the breakdown part. And if you like the audio version only of this video, check out my SoundCloud page, but you can also find it on most of your podcast services. All links can be found in the description as well. And before going into the song, I just want to thank everyone who has subscribed to this channel, liked any of my videos, and shared them on social media. At the beginning of 2018, this channel was at 4,000 subscribers, and at the end of 2018, it reached over 34,000. So thank everyone, but special thanks to all my patrons and support supporters. What you guys do every month means a lot. On to the song. Not a Light, which features Wars the 5'9", is the eighth track of Eminem's Kamikaze album, which was released on August 31st, 2018. It was the second collaboration between them in 2018, with Royce Caterpillar being the first one. I've made a breakdown of all their verses, so be sure to check out the rest of my channel. Not a Light was produced by Tay Keith and Ronnie J. The first part of the song is almost like a remix of Drake's Block and Block Boy's Look Alive, which was also produced by the same guy, Tay Keith. But the second part is produced by Ronnie J, the same guy who produced Rap Devil, but we'll get to that later. You see, the concept of the song was for Am and Royce to rap on your typical trap beat, but still show that they are not like any of those average rappers and that they are way, way doper. For that reason, the hook is a parody hook. You could say it's a parody of Migos, Bad and Bougie with the raindrop, drop tops. So M does a similar thing by naming things that have nothing in common, hence the title, Not Alike. I'll be honest, I get that it's a parody, but that parody is still at the detriment of the song because it's still a terrible hook. But it was still funny the first few times I heard it. As for the verses, I'm still not sure if I'll break down Royce's part, but th I think he did a good job on it. There were a few good lines like, remember everybody used to bite nickel, now everybody doing Bitcoin? And the last line as well, I'm fit to be king, you're cut out to fit in Prince's pants. And there was also a very dope sequence with the rhyming too, but my main criticism is that at times he sounded a little, almost a little bit offbeat, and I would have wanted a little bit more energy, but still it was a good verse. Now Eminem's verse. This verse is the verse that we have to thank because it's the reason why we ended up having Kill Shot. A quick recap. Machine Gun says Haley is hot as fuck in 2012, gets banned from Shady 45, he drops subliminal disses here and there, including on Tech 9's song, no reason, then we have Not Alike, then Rap Devil, and then the final blow, Kill Shot. But back to Not Alike. This verse isn't flawless, but it's a pretty damn good one. I definitely like the flows he used in them and that aggression he shows when he was dissing Machine Gun Kelly. The only part I didn't like, it won't be a surprise to you if you followed my channel. I didn't really like that fast part with the invincible, despicable, the unpredictable part. Too many times, those parts feel like rambling to me, and this part felt like it as well. A good example of a rapid fire part that was done well is Lucky You in my mind. You can go check my breakdown to see why I think so. And another complaint is the mixing of the track. When he would yell, Gang! It would sound so distorted, and the same thing for the heavy drums in the switch up. But big picture, Dope verse, love the energy, love the rhyming patterns, the aggression, and the beat switch up to the Runny J beat really took it to the next level in my opinion. And now, on to the breakdown. You say you're affiliated with murderers, killers, the people you'd run with a thugging, but you're just a wannabe gunner, like you was gonna do something. Acting like you're catching bodies, and you got juice, little youngin, you bugging. You ain't never even been charged in connection with batteries, bitch. Alliteration with the bees. You ain't plugged it into nothing. In these opening lines, the first time you listen to it, you think that M is just talking to a general you that represents rappers who pretend to be hard and from the streets. But on a second listen, when you know this verse addresses MGK, you see that he was also sending shots at him. That's clear when he says you're just a wannabe gunner because the gunner is a nickname that Kelly gave himself. Basically, as you would once again allude to in Kill Shot, Slim doesn't think MGK should ever be called the gunner because he's not a real street dude. Plus, MGK had this song with the rapper Dope Boy called Gang, which is what probably prompted M to expose him as a phony. Plus, in that part, M does an ad lib of Gang to mock the hook of that song. Here, M uses a few streets related slang, so here's what they mean for those who might not know. Catching bodies is a euphemism for homicide, other words, committing murder. And having the juice means to have street credibility and respect amongst gangster. Actually, that line is probably a reference to the 1992 movie titled Juice, which stars Omar Epps and also features the acting debut of Tupac Shakur. Without getting into any spoiler territory for a movie that came out over 25 years ago, at the end, 
Omar Epps' character, Q, kills another character in front of a crowd, and then someone in the crowd tells him, Yo, you got the juice now, man. And the fact that M said catching bodies right before, I think this reference makes sense. To be plugged means to be affiliated with gangs or that you're selling drugs. And with that line, he made a pretty nice for a play. When M said charging in connection with battery, he is referring to when he was charged for assaulting John Guerrero, a scene that was recreated in the Kiss Kit on the Eminem show. So the wordplay is around charge, connection, battery, and plugged. So he takes his own prior legal case and he makes a metaphor based on charging an actual battery of a device that you would plugged in the wall. Pretty clever. Let's continue. Rap God spit lyrical bullets and Gats got your partner's better tulip. This has not to do with muscular, but have guns for sure. You better put a strap on. Other words, if you're gonna roll up with your gang, you're gonna need an arsenal because this bar is over your head. So you better have arms if you're gonna pull up. Skrrr. Nice little rhyme that I like here. Strap on and have arms. They're a little far apart, but he wraps them with the same cadence so it sounds really cool. Then you have Arsenal with bars over. In those bars, there are a lot of double entendres, and there's actually a theme around exercising and working out. When he says this has nothing to do with muscular, but have guns, he plays on the meaning of guns, because it's also a slang for someone's arms or biceps, but he said it's not about muscles to indicate that he was talking about the weapon. Now, I, I would show my guns, but I have a sweater on, so <laughs> actually I don't have any. The nut bar is over your head and pull up line was pretty clever. The pull up is a slang that means to come to a place up in my car and most of the time it's said in a threat like yo if you keep talking about me I'm gonna pull up to your crib. So what's clever about that line is the fact that a pull up is an exercise where there's a bar over your head and you have to use your arms to pull your body up. I mean you probably know what a pull up is. But plus arms also means weapon as in firearms so that line really has a double meaning on the liberal sense he tells MGK that he better be equipped with weapons if he's going to actually do what he was talking about in that gang song and on the other and the other sense is a pull up exercise I just described damn yo that was clever but also he's saying that the bar went over MGK's head probably because he's too stupid to get it because he's mentally retarded but pretends to be the smartest get it and the double meanings are not over. There's another one about sodomy. To have a strap or to be strapped is a slang for carrying a gun. And M is telling MGK that if he's really about that life, then he needs to have weapons on him and his click better come with an arsenal. And the double meaning is with strap on and arsenal. A strap on is a dildo that you can, well, strap on yourself. And it's something that if you were really messed up in the head, you would add to a new blow-up doll if you had criminal intent to sodomize women again. <laughs> Let me know if you got that one. And in arsenal, you have the word arse, which is what the British sometimes use for ass. So strap on, sodomy, and ass. I think you see the wordplay. And on top of that, speaking of the Brits, shout out to all my subscribers from the UK. Arsenal refers to the Arsenal FC, which is a professional football club or soccer if you're in Canada, United States, based in London and England. And if that's your team, you probably knew that without any research, but the nickname of the Arsenal FC is the Gunners. Therefore, if MGK is a gunner, he's going to need an Arsenal. Now, who the hell knew that Marshall Mathers watched the Premier League? One last thing to add that he's incredible filled with double meaning bars and does that overused ad lib of skirt not only to mock its use but right before he says pull up and skirt sounds like skirt and that goes with the expression pull up your skirt which means to expose a man as weak and fake and it's also the name of a not so good diss track by Raymond Benzino. Oh, you run the streets, huh? Now you want to come and fuck with me, huh? This little cocksucker, he must be feeling himself. He wants to keep up his tough demeanor. So he does a feature, decides to team up with Nina. One of the rappers, Tech Nine's nickname is Tech Nina. But next time, you don't got to use Tech Nine if you want to come at me with a sub machine gun. Machine Gun Kelly sent some liminal shots at M on the rapper Tech Nine song, No Reason. That's what Slim is referring to. Before we get into that, let's look at the wordplay. Both Tech Nine and Machine Gun Kelly's names are weapons. So he's basically saying you don't have to use a Tech Nine if you want to come at him with a submachine gun. But the wordplay is the fact that you could also add a comma after sub and then it reads you don't have to use Tech Nine if you want to come at me with a submachine gun where sub is short for subliminal shot. That subliminal shot he's referring to are some lines MGK said in No Reason. It's only one option, you're gonna need a doctor. I ain't talking about the one from Compton. Of course, he's referenced seeing the Dr. Duran Eminem song, I Need a Doctor. And also he said, to remind y'all, you just rap and not God and I don't care who got bars. And this is obviously a reference to M calling himself a rap god. And if we go back to the previous lines in Not Alike, when M said, rap gods spit lyrical bullets and then this bar is over your head, 
it was also a reference to that no reason line from MGK. Although the fact that MGK talked about Haley is what started the beef and got Machine Gun banned from Shade 45, according to M. Skamikaze interview with Sway, it's really the fact that MGK had the audacity to go on Tech 9's track, an artist M is cool with, and then diss him. That's what prompted Eminem to respond in Not Alike. Also, it put Tech 9 in a really bad position because he said he, after the release of the track in March 2018, he was unaware that Kelly was actually sneak dissing Slim. Then it's at that moment the beat switches up to a better beat, a more darker beat, and M amps it up and kills it more in terms of delivery. Let's hey, check it out. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified when I make another video. And if you want to support this channel, go to my Patreon on patreon.com slash Reggie. Just giving a dollar a month is greatly appreciated. That will give you access to full rhyme sheet and the extended version of the breakdowns when there's one. Thanks in advance. Let's continue. And I'm talking to you, but you already know who the fuck you are, Kelly. I don't use the blimps, and sure as fuck, don't sneak this, but keep commenting on my daughter, Haley. I love the build-up to how he finally says his name, because he actually kept doing subliminals until then, but then drops his name and proves he doesn't sneak this, which is a synonym for subliminal diss. And while he drops his name, he makes a wordplay with the homophone when he says, who you are, Kelly, it contains R. Kelly, the name of the R&B singer. And the reason why Eminem uses his name is because when MGK made that comment about Haley being, I quote, hot as fuck, he was 22 and she was only 16. And R. Kelly has been known to, well. Do you like teenage girls? When you say teenage, how are we talking? Uh oh, now you're in trouble. I keep pawing telling you motherfuckers, but just in case you forgot really any jaw memory, jar like strawberry or pineapple or apricot jelly. To jar can mean multiple things, but in this case, it means to affect disagreeably, in other words, to unsettle. So the lines means that if you forgot who he is, then he'll bring back bad old memories to remind you who he is. Then he makes a play on the word jarred, like putting something in a jar, like jam or jelly. Although that definition of the verb jar doesn't exist, he's, talking, he's taking a liberty to make a figure of speech. And that line also has a homophone. When he says, knee jaw, the D and the Y together make it sound like jaw, as in ja rule. So the two lines also mean, if you forgot who Shady is when it comes to rap beef, then maybe you need ja rule memories. But to be fair to ja rule, he didn't stand a chance. It was a mauling from 50 Cent, G-Unit, D12, Obi Trice, Dr. Dre, and Eminem. So it only makes sense that his career was murdered. I respond rarely, but this time Shady about to sound off like a fucking cock, semi glock, demi god. Let me put a fucking silencer on this little non threatening blonde fairy cornball taking shots at me. Notice the alliteration here with the TD sound, but this time Shady about to sound off. In fact, Eminem rarely addresses his detractors, but he did so on Kamikaze, and when he does, he attacks them viciously. That's why he does a similar with the gun. The sound off means to voice your opinion freely and loudly, so he compares how loud his clapback will be to a Glock. Actually, he says that he's half Glock and half God. In terms of writing, what I like is the fact that he used synonyms with semi and demi to show more vocabulary, and also, they both rhymed. Then he continues the gun theme by saying that Machine Gun Kelly, who's named himself after a damn gun, though he has a man bun, he's saying that all the noise MGK is making with the shots he sent at him will be silenced. Plus, that's also another way of saying he'll end his career because after the beef, no one will pay attention to the music or noise that MGK will be making. Fairy is a term to describe a cowardly or effeminate man and sometimes used as a derogatory term towards homosexual males. But a fairy is also a mythical being that you can find in children's tales, the most popular being Tinker Bell from Peter Pan. Why do I mention this? She's actually a blonde. Could be a connection, could be a coincidence, but with M, you never know. If you're not ready, fool, break yourself like Rock City Crew. Obviously, I'm not getting through. We can get it popping like Redding Bach, letting off like Remy Ma, heavy artillery. The Rock City Crew is an American hip hop and breakdancing group that was initially formed in New York in 1977. M mentions them because it goes with what he told Kelly, which is to break yourself, but not like breakdancing. It's a slang set when you want someone to just give up and surrender, for example, if you were about to rob them, but the Fool Break Yourself is a reference to the classic 1995 Friday movie starring Cuban Chris Tucker. It's a reference to that famous line. Break yourself, fool! Now, if you're a fan of eating popcorn at home, you probably got that Redenbach reference. That's, of course, a reference to one of the most popular popcorn brand, Orville Redenbachers. And shorten it to Redenbach so it fits the rhyming and syllable count better. Plus, get it poppin' means to get a beef started and really take it to the street, so get it poppin' popcorn.
Finally, Remy Ma is the female American rapper that you probably know from Fat Joe's song, Lean Back, since she was part of his group, Terror Squad. She's referenced here because she served a six-year prison sentence for assault, illegal weapon possession, and attempted coercion. For that same case, she was also accused of shooting at a woman who was a victim in that whole story. For that reason, M saying letting off, like Remy Ma, letting off meaning to shoot someone. What I find interesting, though, is the fact that Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj were involved in a pretty nasty feud and M is cool with Nicki, so it's interesting that he would use Remy Ma for his simile. Makes you wonder if Nicki felt some type of way about it. Moving on. God's a little harsh with a hard shell, but a motherfucking heart bigger than bizarre's really. Consonants with H, harsh with a hard shell, and a couple words after, you have heart as well. Plus, alliteration would be bigger than bizarre's belly. And compares himself to Godzilla to depict how big and feared he is in the rap industry. And Godzilla's skin kind of looks like a thick hard shell. But what he meant with harsh with a hard shell is that he can sometimes be mean and show no remorse like there was no recourse for him. But at the same time, he wears his heart on his sleeves. Plus, having a lot of heart means you're resilient and won't quit. On top of that, he previously compared himself to Godzilla in Skylar Gray's Come On Let Me Ride with the line, I'm the cousin of a Godzilla because I've spit fire and my dick's dragging. Also, fun fact, I think that Bizarre, besides from Proof, might be the D12 member that Eminem has name dropped the most. I can name at least five songs that he did. American Psycho. Look at Bizarre. You really think he's right in his mind? Vegas. I tell it bitch like bizarre. Bitch, shut the fuck up and get in my car. Stepping stones. Which reminded me, biz. Rockstar was the shit. Venom. How can I be down, me? Bizarre in Florida. Bruce room slept on the Florida. Motel then. And of course, not alike. I'm sure I'm missing some, so let me know in the comments below the ones that I forgot if I did. Plus, I think the reason behind it is because after proof and Denon, Bizarre is the one who was closer to M. Let's continue. Only time you'll ever say I lost, you'll be talking about Fetty Wap, better call Diddy. Just to try to get off me and you better hope I don't call Trick Trick, bitch, this shit don't fly in our city. Punk, don't disrespect OG, R.I.P. Prodigy. Look at the accents with the it sounds. Trick Trick, bitch, this shit, and then city. If you've seen my kill shot video, I criticized MGK for rhyming Trick Trick with bitch, bitch. Yes, here M rhymes bitch with trick, but he shrinks different words for his accents. In the first line, M uses Fetty Wap for his wordplay by using a homophone. I lost is a homophone to I and I lost. Fetty Wap is easily recognizable with his distinct look due to him missing his left eye. He was born with glaucoma in both eyes and doctors were only able to save his right eye. So that's the wordplay Eminem is making. Plus, Fetty Wap can be considered a mumble rapper and M has been going at them. Although this is not a diss, just a reference. You know, in Rap Devil, MGK criticized M for saying he would call Trick Trick and he should handle this beef himself, which I thought was fair. But the reason why Eminem name dropped Trick Trick is because of what he says after. This shit don't fly in our city. You see, Trick Trick is considered, quote unquote, the mayor of Detroit when it comes to the streets. To the point that some artists, even if they aren't gangster rappers, may need his approval if they want to perform in Detroit. One of the biggest stories related to that is when Rick Ross had to cancel a performance in Detroit in 2014 because allegedly, up to 150 people threatened Ross and prevented him to get to the venue. So it was said that Ross was added to Trick Trick's no fly zone list. And the expression, something doesn't fly, means that some actions or type of behavior are not tolerated. So, M combined the expression with Trick's no fly zone. R.I.P. Prodigy indeed. Prodigy was one half of one of the greatest hip hop group of all time, Mop Deep. After a lifelong battle with sickle cell anemia, while hospitalized for complications related to disease in Las Vegas, on June 20th, 2017, he died of accidental choking. Prodigy is also considered one of the best MCs of his generation. After he died, M called into Hip Hop Radio Hot 97 and spit a couple of bars from the classic Survival of the Fittest and pay paid his respect to Prodigy afterwards. If you didn't know, MGK has given himself the nickname The Prodigy and said it in songs such as Divine Comedy, Now I Know, and again in his Rap Devil Diss. So with M having the motto to remind the young rappers to respect the OG, you can understand why Eminem may take offense at that. Although honestly, I don't think MGK does this to disrespect the deceased rapper, since a prodigy simply means a young person with exceptional qualities or abilities. The next part's rhyming pattern is around the O and A sounds and the O N sounds. Those rhyming are close together, so it creates an essence, but it follows the beat in a nice way. You could almost say that he did his own take on that Migos flow, but it's still different. In terms of rhyming, it's my favorite part. Check out the rhymes. Soul drain my soul and then told him. I just want to stop here for a few seconds. Maybe I'm reaching, but I really feel that the way he said Soul Intent, he did it on purpose to make it sound like Soul Intent. That's the old group from 92 to 95 that he formed with Proof, Chaos Kid, DJ Butterfingers, and Mannix. From Mannix's basement, saying how we hate this, our racist, but dope, the excellent statements. 
Told him the moment he signed me that I'll be the most hated though. Made it so there's no shame. It's okay to own it. Cause life's a bitch. She's a bow-legged hoe. But those days are over. When Em is saying that he sold his soul to Dre, it's a way of saying that he's going to be down with Dre forever, that he'll ride or die for him. A sentiment echoed in his Medicine Man's verse and other songs. The reason why Em felt he would be the most hated isn't just because of his content, but because he would be, he would be a white rapper with skills. And the no shame it's okay to own it, that also can be linked to his whiteness, but more importantly, it ties to, into what people like to call the 8 Mile philosophy. The 8 Mile philosophy goes back to the last rap battle of that movie. That philosophy is about exposing and owning your truth so no one can use them against you. Enem has always been open about living in a trailer, being poor, being bullied, or being a drug addict. Bow legged is a condition in which a person's legs appear bowed out, meaning their knees stay wide apart even when their ankles are together. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't think this had any other purpose except rhyming purposes in that line, because this is a condition that affects both male and female, unless it's a slang that I'm not aware of. I Harvey Weinstein, the bathrobe hanging open, my code name is Groper, I rope it with lotion, I fuck the whole world, and I throw away the Trojan. Trojan is a brand of condoms, so Eminem is playing on the literal sense of fuck the world. It's silly, but what I found interesting is that on, if I had e rap, if I had a magic wand, I'd make the whole world suck my dick without a condom on. But now that he's older, he fucks the world with a condom on. So who said M hasn't matured, huh? All in all, those lines are about Eminem describing what his, his music did to the world by making a metaphor with sexual assault. Harvey Weinstein, born March 19th, 1952, is a piece of shit. Old later hoes him with homemade explosive, I blow 80 holes in you. Later hosens are leather shorts, often with suspenders, worn especially in Bavaria, Germany, and also in Austria. Today, it has become more of a full costume that is common to see at Oktoberfest events around the world. But Anne takes a more sadistic approach with its use because he would use it to attach bombs and explode them like a suicide terrorist attack. Again, continuing the kamikaze theme. Don't make me go in, I OJ the flows and I'm insult the injury, Rollades to Goldman, I'm throat spray and Motrin, I throw to Nicole as they both there to choke and I'm, my whole blade is soaking, I double edged sword it cause one place I poke and I stick and I turn into rotating motion. Damn, son. As he's done many times, Eminem references the OJ Simpson case, something he did in Role Model, Kill You and other songs. O.J. Simpson was accused of killing his ex-wife Nicole Brown and her friend Ron Goldman. Both were stabbed to death. O.J. was found not guilty, although most assumed that he did. He probably did. Nicole had her throat cut and was almost decapitated. Now that I think about it, the song Kim is definitely a representation of Eminem's obsession with that case. O.J. The Flows is a metaphor to say that he's killing the flows. He's actually saying that he's treating the track like O.J. treated Nicole and Ron. Adding insult to injury is an idiom that means to do or say something that makes a bad situation even worse for someone, but I think here he also means it as being disrespectful. Therefore, it's insulting to give pain relief medicine to people who were fatally injured. So it's ironic to give Motrin a medication that can treat pain and headaches to someone who is almost decapitated, and throat spray to someone who has a slit throat. And Rolaids is used to relieve things such as stomach pain, and the joke here, well, if you want to call it that, Ron Goldman's coroner report said that he had multiple stabbing wounds. I doubt Rolaids is useful for that. But not us, the only thing we have in common is I'm a dick and you suck. One thing I will say about Eminem's somewhat corny lines, he finds a way to make me smile nonetheless. There's something funny in his delivery in that line. Of course, he's making allusion to fellatio while telling these other rappers they have no skills. Then the remaining bars are him just listing random things that have nothing to do with each other, just like the hook. You see, one thing I did not like about his no favorite verse was that some parts he was just rhyming things that had nothing to do with each other. He does the same thing here, but at least there's a reason it makes sense in the context of the song because it fits the theme of not being alike. So I thought that was clever. Check it out. Otherwise, one has nothing to do with the other. None come close to skunk bug soldier. Tongue shrub shoulder, one month older, sponge mug folder, nun rug holster, lug nut coaster, long jug roaster, young thug poster, unplugged toaster. I'm telling you right now, that was a fucking tongue twister. But again, smart way to rhyme random things, and the delivery was cool too, the way it sounded. Overall, it had its flaws, but this was a great verse. That's it, folks. That was my Eminem Not Alike Verse Breakdown Analysis. 2018 was an awesome year for Eminem fans with all the great music he put out, from the Chloroseptic remix to the features to Kamikaze. So let's see what 2019 has in store for us. But until then, this has been Unabashedly Reggie. Happy New Year.